banknotes. Well, I found out why. Those hippies would come in our office. They'd always want to buy guano. It grows the best pot in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and if y'all want to go see bats firsthand and numerous species of bats and pet them and clavers and everything, go up to Mineral Wells, Texas. Take what is that Highway 281 that goes through there? Well, it's an old town and a lot of old buildings are vacant. And this lady right there, Alola Monder, Amanda Loader, or what is her name? Amanda Loader. Huh? Amanda Loader. Amanda Loader, yeah. She found, or somebody gave her, she got a wounded hat. And she kept it, she nursed it back to health, and she carried it around her pocket, and piled kind of on her shoulder and everything with her pet. And then uh, other people started bringing her wounded back. And pretty soon, she had a big room full, and there's a bunch of old vacant buildings up there in the town, and gave her one of these buildings for the upstairs, you know. And oh, she got all kinds of little places. She makes special little nest farms. She sews socks and they go down into it. She lets them out to uh, to exercise and everything. It's a good place to go. It's really neat. And I, we were making uh, bird houses, or bat houses for her. And she was putting them up everywhere, trying to find out the best heights and everything. I haven't seen her in a long time. I need to go back up there and see if she's still in business. And if it wasn't for these people right here, we probably wouldn't have bats because they were beginning to blast the cave shut, blast the cave shut, and they wanted to clean them out from under the Congress Street Bridge. And somebody said, no, we better think about that first. Do you all know the story on the bats on the Congress Street Bridge? Well, the way they designed that bridge over was that the Guadalupe? <coughs> Colorado. Colorado. Well, the bats found a perfect spot to hide in. And uh, somebody said, we got to get rid of them nasty bats. And somebody else said, wait a minute, let's find out what they're doing. They studied up on them and found out that uh, their main or chief food in that area was mosquitoes. And uh, then Merlin Cub <coughs> got involved, and that's when Bat Conservation International got started. Now, that's a big tourist attraction that comes to Street Bridge. And the Martins do a pretty good job during the day. But the mall is going to trouble some insects really flying at night. Uh, I'll tell you a story on Martins. I let an old gentleman I worked with at Sierra at one time put 13 beehives, with a lot of them had three and four supers on top in our little barnyard and that little first farm we had. And then I got to study up on a couple martins in Organic Garden Point magazine, so I had the guy to build me two real big, pretty martin houses. I put, up, put them up on four by four, and they were about to hear that wall apart. And this guy's bees were right under them almost. And this guy come out and he said, oh man, you got to take that martin house down. They're going to eat my bees. And I said, no, nope, then martin houses stay. We just got attached to one of them was a big black male. He would go up in the air toward the sun. He would come dive at you. And about oh, eight or ten feet above your head, he would flop his wings and make a bunch of different sounds and flutter back off. And every time the kids or I or somebody walked back, he loved to do that. He'd do it in the evening all the time. We called him Old Over. And he came back several years in a row. Anyway, one morning I was going down to milk the cow. And uh, I saw a purple martin coming soon right in that house that passed. I said, good night, what's the matter with that thing? It's crazy or something? And I saw it again, then I started paying attention. And one morning I was going down the milk the cow, I happened to silhouette against a big white cloud. And here came a martin, right in that house. And there were three bees chasing it. <laughs> <laughs> like three fighters planes chasing the B-29. <laughs> one of them was behind the tail about that far, and one of them off of each wing tip, about this far off the wing tip, but back in the draft. This was beautiful. Anyway, that mark made all this, and right in that house wide open. How it stopped in six inches, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wing bees parted like this, and the tail bee went across the top. Boy, it was so beautiful. I just had a you know, movie camera to take that. And then we, we had watched for that, and that happened every year with these and Martins. 
Well, when Howard Garrett and I did that bug book, Texas bug book, uh, that story is in there. And Texas University Press wanted a graduate in a modest to uh, read that book, but, you know, approve of it, make sure they wouldn't publish something that was wrong or false or something like that. So the first person that read it, I think it was Dr. Charlie Cole, he's a good friend of mine. That's who I suggested to send it to him. When he got to the part about uh, the honeybees chasing purple mark, he sent it back to it. He said, don't publish this. These hicks don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I called Charlie. I said, Charlie, what's the matter with the book? He said, now come. You got a story in there about the honeybees chasing purple mark. I said, yep. I saw it. The neighbors watched it. We watched it several years. My kids watched it. He said, no, y'all didn't see it. I said, why didn't you tell me that? He said, Malcolm and Martin can fly 40 miles an hour. I said, yeah, I'm going to die. He said, a bee can only fly 12 miles an hour. I said, yeah, I'm going to just work in honey. You know, I'm going to fly as fast enough to stay airborne. I said, Charlie, did you time a mad bee? <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, no. We see, the bee was in the draft. And the bee was mad. They fly as fast as they want to. Uh, when I had that yard on I-10, I had a guy over there mowing the creek bottom, and he ran into a barrel, and that thing was full of bees. And uh, that tractor was, was 16 miles an hour on the road. Well, he was going 16 miles an hour, all that tractor going, and the bees were flying around. When I was in high school, I could run about 15 miles an hour, pretty fast thing. And cold morning, and there were no bees. I couldn't hear him, couldn't see him, so I was sitting there banging on that box. Well, they only put up with that for so long. <laughs> Here they came, and I ran down that dirt road. I know I was going 16 to 18 miles an hour. <laughs> and they were flying circles around. So a bee can fly as fast as it needs to. When it's working honey, you know, Charlie said they worked and working honey. I said, well, they only going to fly as fast as they need to. Anyway, that was first group. I forget why the, the entomologist did not want that book published. The F kind of thing grows, and that thing they found wrong with it was a big, long scientific name for a big red ant. A P was in place of a T. That's an error. And then the next thing they found wrong was, oh, there's a old peach tree trunk. There's a Indian live peach tree. There's a wood ant. It's a, and it's a wood ant. But that particular ant can do backflips, so they call it an acrobatic. It's still a wood ant. Anyway, I don't know if y'all seen the Texas book, but it's a hot seller. It's already in the second publication of the book. Is that what It's good fertilizer. At least you like to feed them. <laughs> and that road runner, this was on the other farm when I was bought that really expensive camera and I was, you know, taking pictures of nature. And uh, this road runner realized I had a camera and wanted her picture, so she came through the backyard and looked at me and I snapped the picture and she took off. <laughs> Deca geckos. We got a lot of them around now. We used to not have them. Where they where they come from? Where they Mediterranean. Where? The Mediterranean. Mediterranean. They were one of our customers maintained a big atrium. In a place like this, it's all glass and sort of uh, 